Hello viewers, a very interesting development has taken place this week. Social media platform Twitter has challenged some blocking orders issued by the central government before the Karnataka High Court. In their petition, Twitter has said that some of the orders issued by the central government are arbitrary, disproportionate, and are not fulfilling the requirements of the Information Technology Act. More importantly, Twitter has also said that some orders were directed against political content. So this has given rise to a lot of issues, a lot of debates regarding social media regulation and also the government agencies trying to control social media and exercising censorship. So today we have with us senior advocate Sanjay Hegde to discuss various aspects regarding this development. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Manu, for having me. Sir, in 2019, Twitter had suspended your account and you were a very vocal presence in social media and a vocal critic of the government agencies. And you had a prominent reach as well with over one lakh followers. And you have filed a petition in the Delhi High Court challenging the action of Twitter. And now Twitter has questioned some of the actions of the central government. So how do you see this development? Well, this is ironical, isn't it? Uh, at that particular point of time, my uh, uh, account had been brought, by, brought down by what I believe was coordinated action on the part of uh, certain IT cells um, uh, who, uh, who probably gamed Twitter's algorithm to ensure that uh, my account got suspended uh, temporarily. Then where, uh, when I appealed and uh, the, the fight basically turned upon my, uh, what is called my header photograph. The header photograph was a very famous photograph of uh, everybody uh, doing a zig heel uh, Heil Hitler while one fellow stood with his arms across his chest. He was a person called August Landmesser and that's a separate story. But it, that photograph is a photograph of defiance against Nazism, against collective groupthink. However, Twitter's uh, algorithms or uh, Twitter's internal processes were told, no, this is pro-Nazi speech. This is a pro-Nazi photograph and therefore the account should come down. I obviously thought that, uh, you know, if an algorithm gets it wrong, that is why a human appeal is provided and a human appeal will get it right. But no, Twitter persisted and has shut down the account. That leads me to believe that uh, it was not only gamed by, the, by an, an IT cell or uh, any organization like that, but that Twitter uh, operating in India had its own kind of uh, little favors that it uh, traded in with the government of the day. Or some people that tried to curb, tried to cut down their reach. Some people, the number of followers was brought down. Some people were not verified. You remember that even uh, Rahul Gandhi yes. uh, complained that his Twitter account was being uh, uh, sort of uh, shadow banned. Mm -hmm. So, well, Twitter, uh, India in those days seemed to be playing in footsie with the government. If I may use an Americanism. Mm -hmm. At, at that uh, point of time, when I went to court, I raised a few fundamental questions because I believe that these are questions which will affect the future of free speech at large, both in India and elsewhere. Because after all, when we exercise free speech, we are, we are talking right now uh, through the net uh, on a platform. Now, if the platform were to say, look, I will suddenly shut you down because I don't like what you're speaking. And I can do anything because I'm a private entity. Is that right? Is free speech, which is a public good, a public function, should it be held to the private wishes of private corporations? So if you, if you shut, if you lock out somebody from Google, Facebook, uh, Insta, YouTube, Twitter, 
and the like significant social media intermediaries then a person's access to the public square is denied while the public square and the digital public square belong to all users in the garb of curating you cannot arbitrarily shut down people this was this was the uh, rough outline of what we presented to the delhi high court curiously the government of india came around and said no 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 we uh, we are not necessary parties here we have nothing to do with this suspension this is between mr hegde and mr uh, and twitter we uh, uh, we see nothing so they they actually uh, thought uh, tried to shut down the petition but thankfully the delhi high court uh, uh, continued with the petition but it could not substantially be heard because of the intervening pandemic now substantial hearings have begun and the government of india took a uh, turn around and said no 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 twitter can't be arbitrary like this uh, because in the meanwhile quite apart from me some other accounts also got uh, deplatformed and the government obviously has had a rethink so it says that significant social media intermediaries do perform a kind of public function and should be uh, governed by the law of the land including the constitutional values of free speech as available to all citizens in, in the indian constitution now twitter ironically which said that you know it was not really subject to the delhi high court's jurisdiction in my petition has chosen to rely on the same uh, affidavit in its bangalore petition it's gone to the bangalore high court and said look the government of india says one thing in the delhi high court and at the same point of time tells us to do a lot of other things like pulling down content which we don't think is justified which goes far beyond it i am all for free speech i do think that twitter needs to take a relook as to which accounts it bans and for what reason that it should have a logical reason of imminent threat to public uh or uh, not only public order but of uh, of uh, inducing violence which should uh, where uh, the platform needs to step in and uh, uh, take off accounts either temporarily or permanently to that extent curation is necessary but otherwise in the general marketplace of ideas neither twitter nor the government have any um, uh, local standard to say that we will permit this and we will not permit that right sir now sir now there are certain developments happening at the leadership level of twitter and with now elon musk trying to gain control over twitter and he is someone who is advocating absolute free speech he says that social media platform should be like a a uh, public square where just people come and express their opinions without fear of any uh, any consequences and so do you think that twitter's later latest action questioning the government's uh, censorship or government's uh, regulations do you think it has got some relationship with uh, the changes in the ownership of twitter well the musk takeover hasn't happened as yet right right we are still unsure as to whether musk will ultimately take over for the price that he originally offered that's true that's true that's and true. even mr musk is on record uh, in earlier interviews saying that uh, you know uh, while he is a free speech uh, advocate and all that but if he is operating in a foreign country he will go by the laws of that country so i don't suppose uh, twitter in saudi arabia will be as uh, uh, open and as uh, absolutionist about uh, free speech as twitter in the us is so uh, this is one of the things that i had said in interviews earlier also when my account got banned that twitter seems to have varying standards in different countries in some countries it tends to uh, play along with the government of the day 
and to the extent that it can play along, um, at least in India, I'm pretty sure that they did. Because even Rahul Gandhi did complain that his account had been shadow banned, his reach had been curtailed, that the number of followers he had uh, was also being limited. So uh, I am pretty sure that uh, in, in the years gone by, that uh, Twitter has, on more than one occasion, fallen in line with what the government or the ruling party of the uh, day seems to have demanded. I don't see any other reason mm -hmm. for it to be obstinate insofar as my account is concerned. I mean, almost anyone, including right-wingers, who, uh, who have uh, seen the facts of the case say, oh, you can't ban somebody for this. Mm -hmm. But what is obvious to the many does not seem to be obvious to Twitter management or, or and I'm not very sure that uh, Twitter's uh, lawyers have communicated the perils of their uh, Twitter's position in my case at least. But of late, do you see some kind of resistance from Twitter towards certain government actions? Because last year also there were certain frictions between Twitter and the government. Uh, over compliance with the uh, IT rules 2021. And it is only after a lot of uh, uh, government threats and government warnings and even court intervention that Twitter finally made some complaints. And now they have challenged certain blocking orders. So do you see uh, Twitter finally or Twitter now deciding to uh, question the government and trying to assert its position? Do you see a change in its stance? Well, Twitter may not have now gone into unco uncomplaining obedience to all directives. Mm -hmm. There are some directives that it may have chosen, may have thought prudent to challenge. It may very well also be that uh, Twitter's uh, own organization, back in the, uh, the larger organization in the US, may have been asking the, uh, uh, the local uh, unit as to whether they had uh, uh, crawled when being merely asked to beg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these, these were uh, Mr. L.K. Advani's words describing what the press in India did during the emergency. Mm -hmm. So Twitter may have decided that at least it should not give the impression of having crawled. I do not take uh, Twitter's actions um, uh, as um, uh, suddenly having uh, seen the light on the road to Damascus, uh, you must uh, forgive me if I'm uh, skeptical, because at the end of the day, my account still remains blocked. And Twitter still, uh, still uh, in the Delhi High Court objects to my petition. Right, sir. Now, sir, now another aspect of the issue is that there are calls by several sections for increasing the regulation of social media. Earlier this week, uh, one Supreme Court judge, Justice J.B. Pardiwala, he also called for uh, certain parliamentary intervention to regulate social media, especially in the context of increasing personal comments and personal attacks against judges. And uh, Twitter is, uh, as you are very well aware, Twitter is a medium where a lot of people are uh, getting a lot of information from court hearings as well, live tweeting of uh, court hearings has become a very uh, normal thing now. So how do you see the uh, uh, reaction of judiciary? And Justice Pardiwal is not the only judge before that. Uh, when other judges also have expressed in public uh, platforms their concerns about social media uh, interference in judicial process. So what are your thoughts regarding this? See, one thing I must uh, put on record, and this is a very good opportunity, mm -hmm. is that live tweeting by live law and other uh, uh, such organizations have really been a game changer. I remember uh, uh, long ago uh, when the judgment in uh, Suresh Kaushal was due to come in the Supreme Court. And I was sitting uh, in a, uh, in a, in a t uh, television studio and I used to follow a few journalists then. And one journalist tweeting, oh no, 
was enough to tell me where the judgment was going. Mm -hmm. But from those days of individual tweets and all that, now you have uh, live tweets which perform a very useful function. Sometimes when we are stuck in more than one court and we need to see what the tenor of arguments were, then the entire uh, series of tweets becomes very relevant. So uh, in a way, you are, uh, whether uh, Live Law or Bar and Bench or any of the others who live tweet proceedings, they are uh, filling a very useful gap of providing transcripts of the proceedings or reasonably reliable transcripts of the proceedings. Now, platforms like yours, uh, organizations like yours have plain vanilla reporting. You live tweet, maybe you are, you may be wrong in a tweet or two because the person, uh, the reporter did not hear the uh, exchange properly. But those, uh, so far, nobody has accused you all of malice. Right. But then there are a whole host of ill-informed tweets, tweets which attribute motives, tweets uh, uh, which are uh, there uh, for uh, purposes other than strictly legal. And concerning the legal process, as to how they are to be regulated uh, or should they be regulated or should courts say, uh, look, uh, our shoulders are broad enough and uninformed criticism on social media doesn't affect us. That is one view that they could take. Or if there is something particularly egregious, then some mechanism could be developed. But it is very rare tweets on the justice system lead to violence. What leads to violence is sometimes uh, tweets with embedded videos or uh, photographs and things like that, which uh, uh, are taken out of context, which are uh, increase the threat perception and can lead to consequences. Now, Donald Trump tweeting at the height of the insurrection on, uh, on June 6th could possibly have been leading the action in some way or the other or directing the action in some way or the other. At that point of time, an account like that being brought down, uh, entirely understandable. Being permanently suspended, that there can be two views on that. Uh, or, or supposing you have a, a live terrorist situation that they are holed up somewhere and somebody who's sitting in the next house can look at the action and supposing they start live tweeting it. That would bring other uh, lives into jeopardy, including the law enforcement. So curtailing that account at that point of time? Yes, certainly. But perpetually take down an account and perpetually take down an account for no reason whatsoever. That certainly is not on. Also, should you, be, oh, yield, uh, should you yield to the tyranny of Twitter or uh, any other social media platform and say, okay, whatever you do is right. You, you own the platform, you curate it the way you want, you moderate it the way you want as long as no violence ensues or something of that kind is one way of saying it. But uh, on the other hand, if you say, no, 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 there, there should be a government order, then the government can, can pass any order. Some government official sitting in some uh, Vigyan Bhavan or some other Bhavan or the other might say, no, 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 uh, this thing about the, about the harvest uh, figures uh, can uh, lead to our farmers getting depressed. Government orders can be absolutely bureaucratic, absolutely uh, uh, looking through a, at the situation through a pigeonhole which doesn't exist. So to give that power entirely in the government's hands is also not a good idea. I should think that when there are emergent situations, as long as that situation continues, 
temporarily uh, restraining an account or blocking an account might and in some areas alone might make sense but to uh, permanently off. knock people off no so now let us uh, talk about other platforms as well briefly for example last year uh, facebook had uh, approached the supreme court against the summons issued by the delhi Legis legislative assembly yes. regarding yes. an investigation into its roles role into the delhi riots and the supreme court yes. said that supreme court upheld the right of the delhi assembly to uh, conduct such an inquiry and the court even made a made a comment that or certain observations that the role played by facebook in delhi riots that has to be inquired into and the court even in that judgment uh, uh, the court even made references to cambridge analytica and uh, reports regarding uh, social media platforms and governments being in alliance and sometimes they are also trying to manipulate elections these issues were also mentioned in the judgment so how do you uh, see that uh, development as well like so the role of social media in uh, even controlling elections and even triggering rights that so there should be some control in that sense right see the era of unregulated social media i think is coming to an end or the era where social media controls itself is coming to an end either through legislation and there has been a lot of legislation in the us at individual states in in the interests of various uh, uh, agencies including pornography and what not so uh, the supreme court of india was uh, perfectly right when it, when it said that you know if uh, an assembly which has been elected decides to inquire into how social media platforms uh, either talk up or talk down certain political agendas and influence the outcome of elections or even influence the outcome of events now uh, one uh, a video uh, from uh, uh, on on one facebook account can can cause a riot in an, in an entirely different jurisdiction altogether now there is uh, uh there was the palgar case where a few people got lynched they were they were people who were wearing saffron clothes now there is one set which blows it up saying that sadhus got lynched there is the investigation which says that no they are they these were people from a tribe which indulged uh, uh, which uh, survived by begging and which were which wore saffron clothes but before people from that tribe came there there was a huge rumor in that area which was spread through social media that there were kidnappers at large now if law enforcement sees that social media is used as a tool to drive violence then law enforcement should certainly have some power to regulate Could uh, or bring it down at least as long as that emergent situation is there. Uh, uh, you've had uh, the problem in uh, terrorism affected areas like Kashmir as well. You see youngsters uh, being uh, called to arms almost because some of their contemporaries post photographs uh, or videos of themselves with arms. standing uh, in some jungle or the other and and social media is also sometimes in those situations used as almost daring the law enforcement authorities to come and and uh, take down these people so yes wherever there is a credible case of an inducement to violence an incitement to violence or something that would likely cause violence i come back to that original formula that a temporary ban or a temporary take down of that content and that content alone i would support so the invasion 
the curating or the takedown should be specific, case specific, time specific, and should not be broad spectrum. Right, sir. To that extent, there should be some enforcement by the law, uh, by the government agencies as well. You would say that, right? Obviously, I, as uh, Justice uh, Holmes said in that famous statement, freedom of speech is not freedom to shout fire in a crowded theater. So you have to see, and, and that has been the position of law all throughout. If there is something that causes imminent violence or is an incitement to imminent violence or is adds to it in any manner, then of course that, that speech does not have protection. But uh, here we, we confuse uh, any kind of uh, curation for the purpose of an immediate danger to violence with some arbitrary content which somebody may or may not take offense to and which may have been posted, forgotten, and then four years later made a big deal of. There is a danger also in allowing too much curation. Right, sir, right. But the need for curation does exist. Mm. But under the garb of curation, you can't have total muslim. Right. So there should be a certain regulation of social media to prevent violence and also to prevent hate speech, especially in a diverse society like India. But at the same time, there has to be, it has to be ensured that the enforcement does not go into the extent of suppressing dissent or uh, enforcing some sort of social media censorship. And it is also all about drawing a balance, right, sir? So thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing your views on this topic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manu.